SMT Nation, we back. We just got a big update from T-Mobile and their president of technology, Neville Ray. Uh, they're officially rolling out the 2.5 gigahertz spectrum uh, on standalone. They're doing it with uh, PCS band 25 as well, N25. Uh, we're starting to see a lot of uh, you know innovations happening in the standalone 5G networking space with as it relates to T-Mobile specifically. I can't really you know, test the Verizon or the AT&T. It's not commercially available to consumers on the commercial network. But this is an interesting development, and there's some things I want to share with you guys. So I'll link this as a reference point for you all to check out. All right, basically, we just got word that T-Mobile is now doing N71, N41, and also N25. All right, the N25 is Spectrum from Sprint. If If you're just kind of like joining us here on the channel as a you know a community member or a Patreon supporter or just a viewer subscriber there's so much to learn you know there's just so many things that can seem very intimidating and daunting to pick up all the details but pretty much what you have to know is everything that's going on with T-Mobile right now is happening because of the Sprint merger okay when it comes to the network all right so anyways we got this huge announcement standalone 5G networking is starting to really take off for T-Mobile stuff's getting put into motion. And I was able to connect to some things that I want to share with you guys. Okay. Now, two weeks ago, I had posted a video on some 5G UC testing, uh, the N41 and N71 combination. I'll see if I can post the link to that video um, in the description so you guys can refer to it. But the connection was different than it is today. All right. So, what you are seeing here, 5G UC, just means that it's not the low band 5G. All right. Now, when it was N41, I was actually able to see N41 in the connection log here on Signal Check Pro. So it would say like the NR600, which is the low band 5G. And then down here in the secondary connections, it would say like, you know, the it would give me the frequency for the N41. It would say like 20, I don't know if it was 2600 or 2500. Uh, for the upload, you know, so basically, you know, it was doing this two carrier aggregation and it was doing the upload on N41 and it was bad folks. Some of my speed tests, I was getting like 290 down, 320 down, 350 down, which is fine. And then on the uplink, I'd get like two or three megabits, sometimes one megabit. So it was not a good experience and it was crushing my battery life. It was so bad. All right. Now, fast forward to today when I did this testing. And this was about 8 p.m. in the evening. Uh, you'll see a totally different connection type. All right. The first thing I noticed is the latency, the ping is lower. All right. So I was seeing like high 30s to high 40 ish range. Some, in fact, some like when I first started connecting to the site, when they first did the upgrade, the ping times were in the 80s. It was horrible, uh, relatively speaking, to what a 5G network should be it looks like some of that is starting to get fixed in a way uh, with some of these technology innovations. So I have lost a little bit of downlink throughput, but I gladly sacrifice that to get this improvement in uplink. Now, like I was saying, guys, there's nothing special about this uplink. There's nothing encouraging about a five uplink, but I was working with one to three megabits, folks. So this is basically doubling or tripling. I'll take it for now. You know, I, I'll I'll wait for it to get better, and and you know I've got Verizon, I've got AT and T, so I can use their connections for now because they're generally speaking more reliable and there's more throughput. Uh, but this is interesting. We've it looks like we've got the N twenty five showing up. In fact, you can even see it's showing band two here for LTE. It was not saying that before. Again, I I don't know about Signal Check Pro and how it's picking up on these channels. And it's showing it and displaying it on the, you know, when it comes to the icons. But uh, I feel pretty confident because number one, the ping time is different. Number two, the uplink is different. And number three, the downlink is different. All that has changed with this connection. The only thing that's the same is the N71, right? Uh, and, and all the other connections are all different. Okay, so here is uh, kind of what I'm seeing now. Uh, this is what it's showing me, uh, the 5G UC, the LT band 2 showing you know, it's 1900 megahertz, you know, so maybe that's why it's registering that way. Here's another speed test, 21 ping, three jitter, 144 down, 12 up. I, I took that, you know, shortly after that first initial test. Here's that final test. 
And then actually another thing I want to show you guys is an nperf test. Note that it is indicating SA5G, right? So it is on the standalone operations of the network. This is not on NSA using LT as um you know as the anchor. All right, so here's the test. There's the speeds 270 down for a max 170 average and then 11 for the max with a seven and a half average latency is at 85 millisecond. I don't know that the NPERF latency, I don't really pay too much attention to. I don't think it's accurate, uh, but here's some ratings of the browsing. Uh, you'll see like 83%, 89%, 87%. Those are great. Uh, those are improvements compared to the N41 connection I used to get. Okay. Here's the video playback. You'll see it's given me 83% on 360, 73% on 720. And I actually, I'm not even sure what the rating was on the 1080p, but here's the final rating for NPERF. We got an 88,000 score. All right, so we're in the green for the browsing at 84%, and we're in the green for the streaming at 78%. And I think the streaming would have been higher had it tested better with the 1080p. But I think because plan restricted, you know, that that's kind of what that was. But I would assume, you know, with proper restrictions or if I ran a VPN or something, it would have kicked it up over 85%, probably closer to 90%. Uh, so anyways, I wanted to share this with you guys. Be on the lookout for these connections. They are coming your way. Uh, just make sure that you got the right phone to do it. You know, Don't expect the connections if you don't have the right phone to support it. For example, this is on a Google Pixel 6 Pro. Uh, if you got a 6, a 6 Pro, or even a 6A, uh, you can get access to N25. Uh, N71 and N41, which all three component carriers, we're going to be seeing those aggregations very soon from T-Mobile, uh, that the Pixel 7, the 7 Pro can do that. All right, so you're going to want that phone to do that three-way carrier aggregation on 5G NR. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be limited with a couple of carrier configurations on like the 6, the 6A, or the 6 Pro. So Google Pixels, you're getting some action there. Uh, Samsung Galaxy, obviously, you're foolproof. The S22 generation, I think the S21 generation does some of this as well. Maybe not the three component carrier, but definitely the two, I think. And then, um, unfortunately, with the iPhone, you're waiting for an update. You're waiting for the support. Like if you got an iPhone 14, I'm guessing eventually we'll see it. But as of right now, it doesn't. Uh, so those are just some things. And I think, you know, T-Mobile sells like a, some OnePlus devices. They'll be able to take advantage of this as well. But um, this is what's happening. This is very cool, very interesting. Your battery life is going to be a travesty. <laughs> it's gonna, like my battery life folks is awful right now. The standalone connections are crushing my battery life. I run a couple of speed tests. The phone is getting very warm. Uh, you know, so just watch the battery life and it's, it's not the most stable connection. Sometimes it disconnects. I've been seeing LT jumping to 5g, jumping to 5g, you see, you know, I shared this on Twitter you know, and, and, you know, some of the thongs were not happy. They thought I was trying to like dog T-Mobile or something. Uh, the T-Mobile thongs are just weird. Um, anyways, what I was trying to share was my experience with it being unstable, moving around through all these connections. And it looks like this is what has been going on. The configurations for the SA 5G is what's been going on. So it wasn't me trying to poo poo on what T-Mobile is doing. It's just noting that there are some unusual things and some strange things happening on the networking side that are leading to an unstable and inconsistent experience. And now I think we know why, you know, we've got this update for you guys. Let me know if you've been seeing this and experiencing these same things. Have you been monitoring the channel configurations and some of these connections? Very cool cutting edge stuff. I will tell you guys, it's very entertaining to watch this play out and we're excited to see what AT&T and Verizon bring to the table as T-Mobile kind of leads the way and leads the pack in SA 5G. Love to hear what you guys have to say, so go ahead and comment down below. Like, share, subscribe for more. Turn on the bell notifications icon to never miss an upload. Links for everything going on with the channel are in the description. And I'll leave you guys with the words of positivity. Every new day is an opportunity to be great. Go out there and be great. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Peace.